What's up guys, yo bitty LPs here, and today I have a different video for you all. Video games impact many people's lives in various ways, and for this video I'm going to talk about the top 5 games that have that had the most influence on my life. Not necessarily my top 5 favorite games, but the games that have affected me in mostly positive ways, but have been an important part of my life. So. Yeah, um, this is going to be in no particular order, and let me know in the comments what your top 5 most influential games are. And like, but most of these games on the list are like, in like my top favorite, but like I said, not necessarily my top 5. And of course, as always, this is my opinion, so uh, don't bash me for what it is, because it's literally just how it has affected my life. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm going to hop into it. The first game on the list is actually going to be a game that was my first game I ever played. Not many people have heard of, and it's not even on a Nintendo system, which I have mainly done on my channel on uh, Nintendo games. But the first game is going to be Sledstorm for the PlayStation 1. Back when I was about 6 or 7 years old, I was in elementary school, back in my old town of uh, Old Bridge, New Jersey. I would, um, the school started at 9. So, and I literally lived walking distance from school, so I would literally wake up and play the game at like 7.30 in the morning. I would play, I would do races and stuff just because it, it entertained me. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I never even sled stormed. Wow, sled stormed. I never even like snowmobiled or anything because it's like a snowmobile racing game. Um, but it fueled me with so much joy and I would even just play through it and then when I had to go to school, I would pause it walk to school, go to school, and then when I came back, I would unpause and finish it before I did anything else. That's that's how, like, much it meant to me. How, as how I started playing it, um, I'm pretty sure, like, we just had the PlayStation 1. Either, I think my dad might have, like, had it and played it, and it was just that that game was in there, and then I went to it, I was like, oh, what's this? I played it, and I got hooked, and, um, played that for a majority of the rest of the, for like about like two years not nothing like serious it was just I don't know why it was so much fun for me uh, then again I did like other stuff I went out I didn't play it that much but like when it came to like my morning routine for school I would wake up play it and then have to go to school pause it leave come back so it was definitely part of a day-to-day -day for me back then but as, as soon as I moved to like um, my current uh, location um <laughs> location geez as soon as I moved, I um, didn't really play it as much, but nonetheless, it did have an impact on my life. I even played like with friends too and family members, so it was just it was a ton of fun, nonetheless. The second game on the list is actually going to be Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64, a game I've actually done on the channel. Um, yeah, I loved this game a lot, enjoyed the hell of it, played through it so many times. Um, and I even got into speedrunning of the game, like, a few years back, and I kind of want to get back into it, because there's so much, like, depth to it, glitches, strategies with badges, and, like, what you level up, and it was just honestly a really fun game. I honestly may replay it soon. Um, may, I may do, like, a, like a replay through on my channel, because it's been, like, four or five years since I did it on the channel, so... Maybe you'll see that, but nonetheless, I I can I can see myself replaying this game multiple times in the future. I don't know why. Well, I mean, I don't know. People just have that game that they could replay and beat and beat over and over again and still enjoy it. And this is one of those games for me. So that is why it's on my list. Uh, don't don't get me wrong. The other Paper Mario's are good too. Thousand Year Door is a great game. I haven't fully played through Super Paper Mario yet. Maybe sometime in the future. Uh, Sticker Star, it was, it was eh, but Thousand Year Door and especially Paper Mario 64 are the, um, the two games that had influences on me. And just like the, with the Sledstorm, uh, my dad just got a N64, because like, I still like wasn't even, when, this is after I moved from my original uh, hometown. Um, I still like wasn't fully into games yet so he, my dad just had the N64 and that game was there and I played it and I loved it and then replayed it again in the future and still to this day definitely would recommend um, playing it if you have not yet. The third game on the list is a game for the Nintendo DS it is Pokemon Diamond and Pearl more specifically Diamond. 
this is around the time I'm around 12 and 13 years old I believe like middle school almost entering high school but I remember like the previous Pokemon games I wasn't hard into I don't like I played through Pokemon Silver when I was younger didn't like have full knowledge of it and I don't think I even played Ruby and Sapphire when it first came out but when I was with my friends and they were like yo new Pokemon game coming out Diamond and Pearl and I was like oh my god I remember that game I initially got it right away and me and all my friends oh so many people in our school were playing that game we would do battles and stuff um, it was very it was an important part of middle school for me even like a beginning of high school too and from playing Pokemon Diamond and Pearl I got into competitive battling which got me into like the online universe computer stuff and I when I joined Zat Chats to compete and thus there transitioned into YouTube surprisingly um, they didn't necessarily make videos for Pokemon Diamond Pro, but it introduced me to the online world. I got to meet, and I've met so many people from the Pokemon, uh, community back in Diamond and Pearl. Um, there's too, honestly too many names to name off because I don't want to leave anyone out. But, I remember we had the guides for it too, and what was different back then, as opposed to now, is everything was a mystery to me. We had no idea, like in, when we first played it, what was what we were expecting. Nowadays, then um, they like showed off the starters before it came out. Showed off some of the wild, but like oh, so many of the newer Pokemon. But back then, it was all mystery. So it, we we saw a Pokemon, we were like, "Yo, what's that? Like that's cool." And it and, and it was also a challenge for us, which also was a bonus. So um, definitely an important uh, part of the series for me. Probably my favorite in the series. Fourth, fourth gen and fifth gen are my two favorites, honestly. And yeah, it was pretty dope. The fourth game on the list is actually going to be an FPS game for the Xbox 360. That's Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. It's actually the first like FPS I got into. I mainly started playing it when I got into high school. A little bit after the time of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, actually. And a bunch of friends that I met there, um, yeah, just got me into it and slowly learned. And I actually played it for a good amount of high school, like freshman, sophomore, and junior year. I would literally go to school and then go home and play. And I met people like online, made friends with them, and got into a like, bit of competitive uh, for it. But nothing like too big. But it was, actually, it was a decent part of... Um, high school for me outside of school that is and I definitely enjoyed it probably my fa my favorite Call of Duty in the franchise Modern Warfare 2 is like second I actually did play yeah I played um, Call of Duty for a bit up until around I think I stopped like Black Ops 2 um I stopped playing it like I like that's when I like started having less and less fun and then from there I got more into Smash um but yeah, definitely, uh, the campaign was very fun, uh, played through that multiple times, and the variety and all the guns and all that, teamwork, game modes, and then, like, towards the end, there were, like, hacks that got into it or whatever, so you could do, like, different types, like, creative game modes, like, there was, like, zombies and whatnot, it was definitely, um, a fun time for me, but and I know they have uh, the COD 4 remastered, but I don't have an Xbox One or a PS4, so I can't play that. I played it a little bit on my friends like weeks ago, and I had a little bit of fun with it, but it just didn't feel the same, of course. Uh, so yeah, that's number four on the list, and I'm gonna be hopping into the last one. So the final game on the list, and easily, easily the game that had the biggest impact on my life. Is going to be Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Nintendo Wii. Now I know this game gets slack from Smash 4 players, new Smash 4 players like, "Oh, Brawl sucks, it's slow, Ice Climbers, Man and I, blah blah." I don't care. This game had the biggest impact on my life. I met so many friends, so had so many fun times, and a lot of those friends that I met I still know today. And without Brawl, I wouldn't be as good as I am in Smash 4. Um, I like, to, I like to think that I'm decent, <laughs> uh, but tournaments were so much fun back in the day, and because New Jersey was such a good state, I, I mean, to be fair, I was ass in Brawl. I, I was terrible. I, like, went, my best probably was, like, 3-2 and two, one tourney, maybe, <laughs> that I probably still got, like, 17th, but 
I honestly didn't care. It was that much fun, even just playing friendlies with people, because there was no like, there was no big like. It's different now, obviously. Everyone just went to tournaments because they enjoyed the game, and everyone was so chill with each each other. I went to like fest at Kitoro's place, played with so many people just just because, and then we went to dinner with like so many people, and it was it was an amazing time of my life. Definitely, like, I know it sounds weird, even though I do better in Smash 4 tournament-wise, but I had a lot more fun at Brawl tournaments back in 2011 to, like, 2014. Um, and I'd like to thank all the people I met in Brawl that I'm still friends with today for helping me, for then, for giving me reason to keep competing. And it's, it's honestly been, I'm oh, sorry, I hit the, <laughs> hit the, what, the, I don't know what the fuck you call the thing. <laughs> um... Pop filter, that's what it is. Jeez, that took me a bit. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone that's been part of me since Brawl, and even the people I've met in Smash 4. Even though, like, like I said, I'm better than Smash 4, Brawl is definitely a game I can't see, like, forgetting about ever. Like, it got me into Smash, so I have that to thank. And it's still fun as hell to play from time to time. Like, I played it in a tournament a couple weeks ago. I even won that tournament. That was my first tournament win, actually. It was nice. But it was still a fucking blast, and I'll always be playing that from time to time. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed something different. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see, and also what is your top 5 most influential games list. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I appreciate you all watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.